Welcome to Professor Grace's graphic class. Before you start this lesson, download the linked reference file and please watch the ad until the end so you can receive better content. In this tutorial, I will show you how to use the Polar Grid tool and the Live Paint Bucket tool to create a dartboard. Click the Fill Color icon in the Tools panel and press slash on the keyboard to remove the color. Click on the stroke color icon to bring it front. Then select white color in the swatches panel. In the stroke panel, click the weight drop down button and select two point. In the tools panel, click and hold the line segment tool and then select polar grid tool. Click on the artboard and the type width 16 cm and the height 16 cm in the Polar Grid Tool Options dialog box. In Concentric Dividers, type number 5 and in Radial Dividers, type number 20. Check Fill Grid and click OK. Press V to select the Selection Tool. Move the polar grid you just created over the dartboard. Move the mouse out of the corner of the bounding box of the polar grid and rotate it slightly so that each number is at the center of the grid cell. Hold down Alt Shift and drag the corner of the bounding box of polar grid to reduce the size a bit. Hold down Alt and click Direct Selection Tool to select Group Selection Tool. Click and drag the mouse to select only the largest outer circle. Press V to select Selection Tool. Hold down Alt Shift and drag the corner of the bounding box to reduce its size slightly. If you press Ctrl while Selection Tool is selected, you will see the mouse icon change to Group Selection Tool. However, if the Direct Selection is displayed in the Tools panel, the mouse icon changes to Direct Selection Tool when Selection Tool is selected and the same control is pressed. Hold down Alt and click Direct Selection Tool to select Group Selection Tool in the Tools panel. Click and drag the mouse to select only the third circle. Press V to select the selection tool. Hold down Alt to Shift and drag the corner of the bounding box to reduce its size slightly. Make the distance between the first circle and the third circle from the outside of the polar grid equal to the distance between the first circle and the second circle. Hold down Ctrl to change the mouse icon to Group Selection tool and select only the smallest circle. Hold down Alt Shift and drag the corner of the bounding box to reduce its size by help. Hold down Ctrl and click and drag the mouse to select only the second circle from the inside. Hold down Alt Shift and drag the corner of the bounding box to reduce its size by half. Click the center of the polar grid to select the entire grid. Click and hold the Shape Builder tool in the Tools panel. Then touch tear off bar to separate it from the panel. After selecting the Live Paint Bucket tool, Move the mouse to the polar grid. You see the red text click to make a live paint group on the mouse icon. This means that clicking on the selected object will create a live paint group. You also see three small rectangles to the left of the red text that I just explained. The middle square shows the color currently selected in the swatches panel. The left square shows the previous color of the currently selected color. 
and the right square shows the next color of the currently selected color. However, when using the Live Paint Bucket tool, the registration color, which is used only for crop marks and fold marks when printing film, is not available. The basic way to apply color to an object using the Live Paint Bucket tool is to select the desired color in the swatches, color, or color guide panels. Select the pink color in the swatches panel. The selected color is displayed in the middle square of the mouse icon. And, like the color array in the swatches panel, the previous color of the pink color, black, and the next color of the pink color, Tiffany, are displayed on the left and the right square mouse icons. When using the Live Paint Bucket tool, Another way to select colors in the swatches panel is to use shortcut keys. Press the left arrow on the keyboard to select the previous color and the right arrow to select the next color in the swatches panel. Press the left or right arrows to see how the swatches panel and the color panel change. With these shortcuts, you can easily choose the color you want without having to click on the color in the swatches panel. In the swatches panel, select the pink color and then click the outer cell of the polar grid. In the polar grid, click on every other cells to apply the pink color. If you accidentally click the wrong grid cell, press Ctrl Z to cancel it. Click on each cell in the same section as the color applied to apply the color in the same way. Press the right arrow once on the keyboard to select the Tiffany color in the swatches panel. Click between the pink cells of the grid to apply the color in the same way as before. Press the left arrow three times on the keyboard to select white in the swatches panel. Click between the Tiffany colored grid cells to apply the white color in the same way as before. In the tools panel, select the zoom tool. Then click and drag in the center of the dot board to zoom in. Since the current working polar grid is an object converted to a live paint group, you cannot select it with the selection tool. If you want to select objects that have been converted to live paint groups, you must use live paint selection tool. To remove the center lines, select Live Paint Selection Tool. As you click and drag on the lines, press Delete to remove all lines from the center circles. Select the Live Paint Bucket Tool. Select the pink in the swatches panel and click on the large center circle to apply the color. Press the right arrow once in the keyboard to select the Tiffany color in the swatches panel. Then click on the small center circle to apply the color. Press Ctrl-0 to fit the artboard in window. Press V to select the selection tool. And then select the polar grid on the artboard. Since the currently selected polar grid is an object converted to a live paint group, the corner of the bounding box looks like a tooth brace. Like this, when you apply a color to an object using the Live Paint Bucket tool, a bounding box is displayed which represents a Live Paint group object. 
When you select the rectangular grid on the right of the artboard, the bounding box corner icon is displayed in the form of a general object. Select the Live Paint Bucket tool, then select the Pink in the Swatches panel. Click on the top of the rectangular grid to apply the pink color. Press the right arrow twice on the keyboard to select light gray color in the Swatches panel. Click and drag the Sunny and the Michelle rows to apply the gray color. Press V to select Selection tool. Since the rectangular grid is an object converted to a live paint group, you see that the bounding box's corner icon has changed. This time, I will show you how to convert an object converted to a live paint group back into a regular pass object. Hold down Alt and drag the rectangular grid to copy. Click the Expand button in the Control Panel. The corner of the bounding box has changed it to the shape for the general pass object. Hold down Control and click the Artboard to deselect the selection. Hold down Control and click and drag each of the pink and gray cells of the rectangular grid, expand it to the general pass object. You see that the rectangles that filled the cells are separated from the rectangular grid. As you have just seen, expanding a live paint group to a general pass object allows you to select or separate grid cells. Click the separated grid cell to select the entire grid, then press delete to delete it. So far, you've learned how to use the Polar Grid tool to draw the basic shape of a dot board and how to apply colors using the Live Paint Bucket tool. When I teach Illustrator to my students, I sometimes see some students applying color to a regular object using the Live Paint Bucket tool. But it is not appropriate to use the Live Paint Bucket tool to apply color to general objects, and you should apply color to general objects using the Fill and the Stroke colors. Because the Fill and the Stroke colors are the basic method to apply colors to objects, and also because it is easier to edit and control objects. However, as you have learned in this tutorial, it is effective to use the Live Paint Bucket tool to apply color to blank spaces that are surrounded by lines, such as a rectangular grid, a polar grid, or a polygon art. I hope this tutorial has helped you to understand the Live Paint Bucket tool. Well, this is the end of the dartboard design. Thank you for watching Professor Grace's Illustrator Lecture. Please watch the next video in order to follow all the courses without skipping a lesson. To keep learning and master Illustrator, please press the subscribe and the like buttons.